Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left hand corner, we have Gypsy starting as the bro blah, brown Terran. Upper right hand corner, we have Machine as the green Zerg. This is going to be on Good Night, which I think I've already shown several times. Part of the, this seems to be a popular map with these guys. Part of the New Worlds map contest, which ended. I'm not sure when this will get uploaded, but it has finished. So check that out and go see there. I won't give any spoilers as far as the winner. But currently, Team Jayun Hawk Striker Machine are up 2 0 over Team Gypsy Dragon Raz Just. I am actually very excited to commentate this match in particular because I feel like I have been learning a lot from both Whip and from Gypsy as far as like looking at their play style, as far as uh, the modern Terran meta. And I've been really behind on this, and actually, I went, it actually provoked me to go back and look up all the things that kind of happened when I wasn't watching StarCraft for a bit of time. So there was definitely the 111 thing that happened in between, but there were just a lot of other build orders that happened in between in the meta that kind of pushed, because the previous era that I had been commentating in, 3-hatch Zerg play was really the big thing, going 3-hatch Zerg, but there was a lot of up, a lot of build orders like 5-hatch, uh, plus 1, or 5-hatch, plus 1, 5-racks, uh, um, other things like that that really and 1-1 one, one, I think might have been the nail in the coffin that forced Zerg players more towards two hatch play. Looks like we're seeing an overpool here from Machine. And really the more modern Zerg plays is you open up two hatch, you go, uh, you get a lot of Mutalisks out. Sometimes you can continue that with just building overwhelming amounts of Mutalisks. Usually you're getting plus one weapons to follow that up. Or you can just use it to try to contain your tear an opponent, effectively keep them away from your third, establish a third gas, get your third gas up, and play from there. There's been variations of Crazy Zerg on that, which is basically build a ton of Mutalisks, get early Carapace upgrades, and then play Ultralisks from there once you've established three bases. Um, there's been other things like that, but we've seen a lot of res interesting responses with earlier kind of earlier move outs uh, from Terran play. We've seen, and really the thing I saw from Gypsy, and I think it might have been both Gypsy and Whip, I'll have to go back and look at those replays to make sure. But basically getting earlier engineering bays, getting an earlier plus one, playing a little bit lighter on barracks, but basically punishing those mutalisks. Basically getting the plus one weapons before they have that plus one carapace comparatively. And really minimizing Zerg's ability to accomplish a lot with those er with that early mutalisk harass. And also kind of the, the timing pressure to go ahead and kind of, it, it feels like split. It's like I either do something to go ahead and mitigate the Mutalisk's ability to harass and take your army out and basically get a superior... Put yourself in a position where you can either quickly get to Science Vessels and have a superior Science Vessel count and mitigate the attack that way, or deny the third gas, or anyway, things along that. So it's been fun to see. Bunker up, Command Center being built. Looks like we are just seeing uh, one Rax thus far from Gypsy. So point being, I've been enjoying these matches to at least learn modern things that they've been going in that regard. Machine... As far as an opponent to go up against Gypsy, I really got to favor Gypsy, not just because he's one of the best, because arguably he is the best Terran in North America right now, but Machine tends to play a very uh, rote style, and I know that he has been oftentimes playing kind of that Mutalisk into grab a third. Uh, I think he oftentimes like transitioning into Lurkers to go ahead and hold the ramp and play from there, and it just feels like Gypsy has a lot of options to go ahead and press against that. Currently, it looks like, though, he is just going to go for what looks like standard Terran play, which is to get the barracks, then get the academy, have range, and kind of just absorb uh, the attack from there. So it looks like he's kind of playing what I would say has been just the flat standard recently, which is uh, two racks, academy, engineering bay, a uh, bunch of turrets, and just play a little bit defensively, and then look for an opportunity with your first move out to have medic marines to go ahead and punish wherever Zerg is taking the third. So what can be helpful is, and then the question is, is playing whack-a-mole with where did Zerg take his third and going from there. Machine already moving out. That's the wrong unit. Moving out with this drone to go ahead and grab his third base. It looks like he's going to opt to try to grab it in that bottom right-hand corner. So he's trying to be as far away from Gypsy's main as possible. So when Gypsy moves out with that Medic Marine Force to go ahead and try to pick off that or deny that third base, there will be a, a delay in doing so. I also should mention that uh, check out Nyokin's channel on YouTube. And he has kind of a description on a build that he's been trying to execute recently, where he actually cuts SEVs early, which it doesn't look like Gypsy's doing here, but he cuts he cuts SEVs early to go ahead and deny the third, and he still ends up in a decent economic position to follow things up. So anyway, stim upgrading, engineering bay, 
is already plopping down. We do have that spire uh, about two thirds finished. A couple zerglings on the front, kind of moving out. I think these are yeah, these look like speed upgraded zerglings. But that hatchery already up in that bottom right hand corner. That's enough spieling about this. Point being, I feel like as far as like looking at build order matchups. Or, or keeping track of the build order and the, the theory and concepts behind them. I've been lagging a little, a little bit behind lately. Because I feel like I got up to date with uh, Artosis, but Arto I've been actually trying to mod Artosis' stream a little bit, and it's just been uh, a lot of... Uh, I don't know, chat's been very distracting, I'll put it in that regard. So I've been a little bit behind as far as watching the actual games, and he's been going up against a lot of Protoss. But anyway, his his uh, TVZ is really fun to watch as well, although he kind of this is kind of his straight style. So the Zer I like what Gypsy's doing here. He's actually pressing forward and clearing those Zerglings just in case. Because oftentimes what will happen is, is the Mutalisks will pop out. We saw this in the previous game. He's going ahead and getting that Carapace upgrade, which suggests that Machines yeah, going for that standard thing. But oftentimes these Zerglings can kind of flood across and do kind of do a run by backstabby thing. Five mules now moving forward. The turret's already in place over that natural expansion. There is a bit of a lagging turret. No turret quite yet at the main. Machine is gathering up with these five mules. It looks like he's going to try to sneak across towards the main, but it looks like the Medic Marines already in position. So Gypsy, with a nice defense, going ahead and hammering that. So third base is up in that right upper, uh, sorry, that bottom right-hand corner, a good distance away. I think Gypsy realizes that's s such a large distance to cover that he might as well just play this economically. He's getting level on weapons, does have range upgrade now. And I'm wondering if he's just going to sit back and rather than trying to threaten this third base, at an extreme distance if he's just going to opt. No, it looks like he is going to move out and just go for it. So diving in, actually getting a lot of free damage on these Mutalists initially and kind of pushing these units back. Picked off one Mutalist right there, which is a big win, particularly because he's only, it looks like, lost a single Marine thus far. And he's going to try to make that slow push to that bottom right. He can also try to threaten that main, or sorry, threaten that natural expansion, which can oftentimes force additional creep colonies to be built. And this is going to come down to Machines Micro to be able to pick off and hold back these Medic Marines, just kind of bully them and force them to, to play a little bit slower. A Medic getting picked off, which is actually absolutely huge. Seven mules in this grouping, an eighth one will be joining shortly. Right there, needs to be careful on the reinforcement point. And this is kind of, it comes down to Machines' ability to Micro and keep these Medic Marines back. I also like these Zerglings' position to go ahead and cut off reinforcements. So these Medic Marines are a little bit stranded. Waiting on level one weapons and just trying to not overstim. Another Marine getting picked off. Looks like an Overlord is going to get caught out in the open. That's going to put Machine in the red. He should be able to deal with that without too much trouble. But Gypsy not really able to provide too much of a threat. Enough so that Machine's going ahead and grabbing an additional base. It looks like those Zerglings might have tried to dive into that natural expansion. They probably got wiped out and I missed it. But Gypsy going ahead and backing off. He does have that, that factory up. He is getting the starport up. And I'm wondering if he's even going to go for a second starport on top of this. And try to get, yeah. And plopping down a couple additional barracks. I feel like because of the length, just this is a huge distance to cover. It's a little bit challenging for Marines against Zergs in particular here. Queen's Nest is almost already up. Machine feeling very, very comfortable with where he's at on this economy. Gypsy has a lot of Medic Marines up, but he really wasn't able to slow down Machine in any regard, aside from that single Overlord kill. There's the double starport. And Machine continuing to kind of harass. He does have a lot of these mules. This is usually where he stops the mules production. He's got that level 1 carapace. Uh, and this is kind of that transitionary window where Lurkers are on the way. If Lurkers can get on top of... Uh, where's the ramp? You can get Lurkers on top of ramps that can... It becomes very difficult to evict a Zerg from that position. Hive tech on the way, a couple lurkers being built to defend these exterior locations. Machine doing a pretty good job of just, yeah, continually harassing and bullying these troops back, losing another Mulesk right there. But this is kind of the critical piece here, is, is can Gypsy from the follow-up point get, the, get a lot of science vessels established? And then where there's that kind of window where Zerg just kind of has to sit back and absorb, can he get that science vessel count up and... Uh, this is kind of Gypsy's playstyle. He likes getting these Medic Marine Ball, going up and hanging out outside the natural expansion or outside in various positions, playing map control, and then just sending his science vessels out in kind of a protective cusp, irradiating absolutely everything. Another Overlord picked off an open field, and that's again going to put Machine in the red. Gypsy doing a really good job of macroing at this stage, and actually a little bit of mismicro there from Machine actually loses a Mutalisk as he 
did a, a bit of an overdive, and he doesn't have lurkers in this bottom right-hand corner yet. I expected the lurkers that he was building to be here in this bottom right-hand corner. So the Mutalus having to do some work to buy some time. Again, Machine's going to have to wait. But losing that Overlord actually ends up being more critical than initially thought because he had to wait on that Overlord to hatch, actually having to morph lay, uh, lurker eggs on the ramp. So I guess the initial two Mutal uh, sorry, lurkers were at his main rather than at third. Usually I've seen him try to build him on the ramp, and it looks like this isn't a tight seal, so the Medic Marine's actually able to slip through. Gypsy going to be able to get some economic damage done here. The Mutal is trying to redive in. Some Zergling spawning as well. Machine actually with a really nice defense. Cleaning up those Medic Marines. More Medic Marines and some Science Vessels now grouping up. Towards that bottom right hand corner. Adrenal looks like that Queen's Nest is up. Adrenal upgrade is here in the Defiler Mound. Also on the way. So now Gypsy. Ooh, and some Lurkers actually playing aggressively on the lower ramp. Not, not typical. It's going to force him to radiate. Good radiate on those Mutalisks. Looks like, unfortunately, catching a Mutalisk that was already a little bit thin. Machine Happy actually just sacrificed these Mutalisks at this stage of the match. Do what damage you can with them. Some Zerglings and Lurkers trailing across this map. Gypsy going to go ahead and try to grab his third base. But Gypsy, yeah. Needs to not overcommit. Loses the Medic Marines. Ooh, catches some more Mutalisks here. Needs to be a little bit careful. Those Lurkers back on top of the ramp. But yeah, he can just kind of slow play this. He doesn't have to dedicate the Medic Marines. He can just build that Science Vessel count, protect the Science Vessels, go up, irradiate the big key units, a Lurker here, a Defiler there, soften up the Ultralisks, and just continue to macro up from there. And basically, this is kind of the game he likes to play. Uh, whittle things down, and as long as Machine is for it, and this is where I feel like it, this is what separates the great Terrans from the uh, average Terrans, is utilizing this in-between time to go ahead and establish where Zerg really can't attack you, and it's still, and they're still teching up, and they're still playing defensively, uh, just doing everything you need to to make sure you're in a good position to win the match from here. Two starports up. It looks like there are the science vessel count continues. Well, a little bit silent right there. Uh, waiting for that science vessel count to grow. There are a, a significant amount of medic marines out in the field, and it looks like Gypsy does have the overall as far as just like pure macro count lead. But Machine is filling in with a a lot of hatcheries. He's getting all sorts of drones. He's got a lot of Scourge in position. The question is, is can he catch Gypsy and basically pick off some of these science vessels here and there? You can see Gypsy getting another group of medic marines, kind of establishing the midfield machine pushing out. Able to clear a couple of them, but Gypsy doing a pretty good job of, of walking away from them. As he doesn't have a science vessel to go ahead and drop that irradiate machine moving up with that the Scourge. So it's kind of like a game of like pop the it's kind of pop the science vessels game. And map control. And Gypsy, you can see, just going ahead and moving up, grabbing his fourth base. So he wants to make sure to, to keep that economic advantage. Another irradiate. And Machine just being forced back. Because he just doesn't have the troop count to kind of press into this. And Gypsy continuing to just macro up like a beast. Nearly twice the supply. But yeah, it's it comes down to whack-a-mole and positioning, basically. Gypsy wants to establish kind of these pockets where he's got these medic marine troops... Machine trying to sneak underneath, again trying to find some science vessels with those Scourge, not finding anything. Might get some Medic Marines. But so basically boxing everything out in that bottom right, continues to just move forward. Actually, did he end up losing some science vessels? I think he just regrouped them to another location. Yeah. Here we already got seven science vessels out in the air, and so things actually looking pretty good from Gypsy. But Machine able to walk some Lurkers up to the natural expansion with a Defiler. So three Lurkers there. They are radiated, so I'm not sure how long they're going to last in the midst of this, but the small victories and at least able to empty that natural expansion. I'm not sure how much it's really going to hurt Gypsy, though, because he already does have this mineral only up, and he already has his 9 o'clock uh, going to be finishing shortly. So he's... I like what Gypsy's doing. He's going to go... He's just backing off at this stage and saying, like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and max out. I'm going to keep my Science Vessel count high. Nice Plague. Uh, for Machine to go ahead and clear out the natural at that bottom right-hand corner. But I'm just going to preserve my Science Vessel Clown. I'm going to continue to just outproduce you. And you're just going to sit on three bases, never get a fourth base. And I'm just going to deny it and play that game from here. Where you're never going to get a fourth, and I'm going to starve you out by having more efficient trades. Being able to drop irradiates basically constantly and protect my Science Vessels. A huge plague, though, on the Science Vessels to the north. Which can be a big swing in momentum. I'm wondering if Machine's going to queue up a... Mutalisk, because then, well, first of all, it makes them one-shot hits from the Scourge instead of two-shot hits across the board. There are Mutalisks moving up, and oh my goodness. 
all sorts of science vessels getting massacred. Big swing in momentum. So now Machine pushing forward with some ultra. So a good plague, a nice mutilus positioning, and actually able to find a lot of these science vessels out there. It looks like he is starting to take that natural expansion. That will be a fourth. Might even be able to take that 12 o'clock base. Some ultralists alone going to get pushed back. Gypsy still has another large grouping of science vessels to go ahead and fill out his army. But Machine's starting to move out on the map. And if he can get a bank going, he can go ahead and start pushing in those ultralists and that will be scary. Okay, going, starting to move up into this 3 o'clock location. No Defiler support, so these Zerglings should be cleaned up. They do have that Adrenal upgrade, which makes them do a lot of damage very, very rapidly. Some Zerglings are able to get in that mineral only, so Gypsy going to go ahead and back off there. And he's trailing with some Ultralisks and some Zerglings, trying to push Gypsy back. So he's pushing a lot out, able to get a little bit of economic harass done. Raz leaving the game. Another huge plague over those Science Vessels. Some Ultralisks grouping up to go ahead and with their irradiate be just moving balls of irradiated death. The Scourge not able to get on top of those science vessels critically. That Defiler going to walk its way back home. Zerglings again able to get into that mineral only and do some additional economic damage, but Gypsy continuing to maintain a really good supply count. He is, after Machine's kind of diving in, he is, and let's see if this Defiler is going to be able to save his own life by dropping some Swarm. He's doing a pretty good job of pushing Machine back. Yeah, Machine grabbed that natural of that bottom right hand base, but he's not yet been able to take that third. He's not yet really been able to push out a lot of Ultralisks or kind of transition into the heavy macro game. And actually, are those Ultralisks? I think Machine might have accidentally boxed himself in with his SimCity. So those Ultralisks are just going to sit there. And Gypsy, critically, even though they're plagued, he's got he's managed to keep those Science Vessels alive. Now pushing into that natural expansion. Machine does not look like he has enough to, to push this back. So this might be the game ending. Ooh, but that single Spore Colony. Picking off all sorts of science vessels. It's got to be frustrating. Some ultras finally sweeping down. Zerglings running up. There's no defiler to support all this. But so, but it looks like Machine is going to be able to go ahead and clear everything else out. As far as upgrades, level 2 weapons, by the way. Level 2 armor where Machine has just gotten so a little bit behind in the overall carapace upgrade. So Gypsy does have that. With that attack and that natural expansion, he's continuing to attack. He might be able to get that Nidus Canal. So that's going to be a long distance reinforce. So now the distance of the map working against Machine might end up losing this natural expansion. Losing a lot of drones right there. Some Zerglings trying to rush down. But they, again, without that, without the level 3 carapace, they just melt before they're really able to get on top of these Marines without the Defiler support. More Zerglings grouping up that natural expansion hatchery down. So Gypsy once again able to deny that fourth base. And more Netic Marines sweeping in with those Science Vessels into that natural expansion, basically being everywhere at once. And yeah, Machine calling GG. Basically, Gypsy able to hold all of these bases. I think I might have missed an attack into this natural expansion. But you can see Gypsy's gameplay where it's like, yeah, he just sits back, builds a lot of that troop count up, holds all that territory, gets those favorable trades, and just denies additional bases. I feel like Machine just had maybe a little bit of an overextension, and, and Gypsy sensed it, was able to just pounce on it, and just attack literally everywhere at once. Critical thing, though, I think towards the end of the game was just that huge upgrade advantage that Gypsy had over Machine. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So that is going to be two games for Team JY, Hawk, Striker, and Machine. One game for Gypsy, Dragon, Raz, and Just. Again, check out both of their channels at Gypsy93 on Twitch and MachineUSA on Twitch TV. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.